How are you all still watching Ways? Hmm. Transgender Day of Visibility. <laughs> it's an annual holiday observed on March 31st to celebrate the accomplishments and contributions of transgender people, as well as to raise awareness of the discrimination and violence faced by transgender community worldwide. Transgender Day of Visibility is an important opportunity to celebrate the diversity of gender identities and expression and to promote understanding and acceptance of the transgender community. You see, no wonder I've been seeing a lot of posts on trans on my feed. You know, on Instagram, when you just go and explore, yeah. you just be seeing trans, trans, trans. Apparently, it's this day that is causing it. So I saw someone that said, I don't want to identify anymore as trans, uh, as uh, whatever. He wants to be as identified as invisible, so he becomes transparent. <laughs> like, there's just so many things that is happening around the community. Invisible. Yesterday I was watching, I think I shared that video, I was watching a video of how, um, I think a man that raped a woman or something, I can't remember now what the story was, but he raped her, now it, are they saying they want to put him in a female prison or a male prison, you know, because now he has, he has now switched to becoming a, a woman, right? So uh, where would they put him? Somebody that oh, was convicted woman, for rape. He, he was a, a man that raped a woman and now changed himself to become a woman. Now, <laughs> I'm confused. The Western world Uti, issues. <laughs> this transgender yes, matter. Well... Um, people identifying as all sorts. I think the other day I saw a man who said he was 69, identifying as 49 or something like that. Look, it's a very slippery slope. You accept one, you accept all. And in today's world of inclusion, it seems like everybody's, um, everybody's trying to find the politically correct term to accept everybody. Uh, like I said, it, it, it really is a slippery slope. Uh, first and foremost, you have people who have real um, emotional, and, emotional and psychological issues who obviously don't feel like they fit into the skin or the body that they're in. Um, you hear all sorts of stories. So at this point, you know, it, it, you want to just say, look, it's black and white. You're born a boy, you're a boy, you're born a girl, you're a girl. But, you know, you hear some of the stories and... Clearly, there's a problem. Now, whether the answer is to go and change your gender, that's between each person and their God. But I think that it is when we start to get into the space of inclusion, where you can choose to do you, you can choose to make the change to you. Um, but when it starts to have a direct impact on what others are then having to consume or to deal with, um, around it. That's when it becomes difficult for people. So I think we're in that adjustment phase where... Well, this is crazy, Uti. Did you see the video I shared about the, the, school, the woman that brought a, a textbook that was found in a school library that, talked, that spoke to pedophilia... It spoke to, uh, what's it called, oral and sex. It's, it's, I mean, those kind of books, right? Those kind of books are different problems. That's not unique to that. That's not necessarily a transgender problem. I mean, the fact But that it's also that linked, to the, it's linked to the queer community now, right? And they are all no, inside I, that... I, so, so these books, right? I, I've seen different videos and different um, types of these books where, it, you know, your body and, you know, all of these things. It, I mean... Yes, it refers to some um, gay, some you know, gender-based issues, but it's not based on that. Do you see what I mean? It talks about her heterosexual relationships as well. That one is a different problem. That is just the inappropriateness of what is being, um, what is being made available to children at what age. So that's a different conversation around protecting children and them being kids. But when we talk around this transgender problem, you know, everybody's looking for representation. If you look in the media today, you watch movies. There's hardly a TV show or a movie that you watch now that no, doesn't, you know, like really have um, yeah, that one of the representative of the queer community LGBTQ yeah. presence, right? Um, and for me, it's that thing that says, you know, art is a limitation of life. So the fact is, there's a proliferation of this. Um, 
in the world. And media simply represents. So if you, if you think about it, I exist as a person in the way that I exist. I want to see, when I put on my TV, I want to see somebody like me on TV. That is the nature of entertainment and media mm. and all. It's supposed to represent the populace. And we can't ignore you know, that there has been an explosion in the world of the LGBTQ community. Um, and that is where that is coming from, where people are essentially trying to give representation. So I'm a child at home. I have two dads. When I put on the telly, I don't want to see just mom. Like, it will confuse mm. me how I have two dads and everybody else on TV has a mom and a dad and start asking questions. So these are the things driving it. But I think that we're still in very, very uncomfortable places where... A lot of places and you know have accepted it, and it's becoming part of the culture. We're not, the world is not quite there yet, because obviously some places are more accepting than some. Um, you know, if, when you talk about Africa, a lot of African countries still have laws against um, you know the whole LGBTQ, um, you know, trans and all of that. So there is, there is a, it's a slow change, but the change is happening. Okay. Whether you accept, whether we accept it or not, let or me not, that. Or not, right? Way. Absolutely. Mm. All right. So let me quickly run through what did we find in the news. Um, my story is actually interesting because again, when people are fasting, they will be whether mm -hmm. you know should they have sex, should they not have sex, you know. So when I saw this, I said, okay, this was quite interesting. An imam at the Federal University of Agriculture, Belkuta Mosque, you know had explained that Muslim couple can have sexual intercourse during the month of Ramadan, but only after they have broken their fast. Um, the cleric who spoke with some of the correspondent of um, Punch said that uh, he explained that it was only illegal for unmarried couples to have sex. Um, so he says it allows legally married couple to have intercourse between Mogrib and Solatu, that is after breaking the fast and after the pre-dawn meal during Ramadan. Because again, I know that some Christians, you know, these pastors have even spoken about this issue. Some Christians have argued that when you're fasting, you should be very holy, you should be this, you should be that. And you know, I mean, body don't be wood, you know, so I just want to tell anybody out there, please don't starve your partner, either male or female, because you're having sex. When you have broken your fast, please do the do. <laughs> Mary, what's in the news? I mean, that's very weird, but okay. And how is it weird? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, Davido is back on the scene. He has released his new album, which is Timeless. And in his interview on Friday with Beat FM, he said that he still feels them around him. Speaking about his, lost, um, his loved ones, there's a song dedicated on the album, which is called Legends Can Never Die, which is also one of the oldest songs on the lab album and is dedicated to everyone out there who has lost one or two close people. He said, like over time, even everybody knows that I lost my mother at 10, losing my best friend and my bodyguard in one to two years, and then losing a child and all that together. I don't think the song, I don't think the song is really being sad. I just feel like since I have lost all of them, I don't want to really feel like they have left me spiritually. I still, f I still have them around me, a kind of, a kind of. They were all legends, so that's why I say that a legend can never die. Yeah. I think his new al album is making a lot of waves. Uti, <laughs> what did you find um, for us? Okay, so, uh, mine is in the world of sustainability. So my headline says. Nigerians buy 1 million air conditioners annually, and this is by the UN. So um, the United Nations essentially is talking about the heavy reliance and how Nigeria has become one of the top markets for the sale of air conditioners, as well as refrigerators. Uh, and of course, we, I mean, we all see what the heat is like and how, you know, we're largely dependent on these devices. However, the concern here is with the energy efficiency ratio, of course, um, our viewers may know that, you know, of course, first and foremost, air conditioners consume a lot of electricity and the um, fluorocarbons that are used in the refrigerants in our refrigerators um, also deplete the um, also deplete the ozone layer. So 
what the UN is essentially trying to say is that, look, the, there are standards that have been set globally. And um, as Nigeria, we need to make sure that we're not a dumping ground for um, devices that don't meet the energy, the minimum energy efficiency standards. Of course, uh, if you go to buy um, these devices, sometimes you see those ratings, A, B, C, um, color coded ratings around the energy efficiency of the device. So it was really just a, a clarion call at an event um, where we were, they were calling on the federal government, um, or rather the federal government in response to that was calling on the Nigerian Customs Service, the Standard Organization of Nigeria, to Let's ensure see. that they are, in, they are um, alive to their responsibilities uh, to ensure that there isn't an influx of substandard, substandard cooling devices or appliances um, that would pose a danger to Nigeria. Of course, if you compare Nigeria to the rest of the, or to other parts of the world, um, obviously, climate change is a big issue and changes are being made globally around the efficiency of cars. We see the proliferation now of electric cars. We Uzi. see bands of... Sorry, yeah? All this English is plenty. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me, even if you have... Look, look at my old house. I have how many air conditioners? Maybe like 10. Now only one, they come on. You understand because well, when the Nepal bill, the power bill will slap you. You will yeah. call, you will yeah. regulate yourself. No, but you see the thing about it is that that's always what you know. Of course, in Nigeria, our, our focus is on where it hits us, and that really is in our pockets, right? Um, which is where I was getting to with what I was saying that in other parts of the world where the climate is also a big driver. For us, you are not switching on your AC if you could afford it. People who um, can afford it. You go to some people's houses, their lights are all on, their ACs are all on, right? So the fact is, it does have beyond your pocket, it has far-reaching far consequences for the climate, for the ozone layer. So the okay. fact is, whilst the world is turning around to go into a net zero um, on greenhouse gases, Nigeria's not, I don't even think we're there yet. You know, like you said, this hunger, when hunger is between you, climate and the rest is not really your problem. So the fact is, we need to make sure that the organizations who are responsible yeah. are ensuring that the best type of um, equipment is coming into Nigeria. Because with the global warming, Nigeria is only getting hotter. Well, so well in fairness to Nigeria. most of the recent brands, mm -hmm. right, the newer brands that are coming into Nigeria, I know that most of them, you see all those signs. You know, the no, whatever no, free, okay. whatever whatever free thing, you see it on the, on the body of the product telling you that these are safer... Um, what's it called? Safer uh, equipment or appliances to use. Well, mm -hmm. it's a good thing to know. UN, thank you. <laughs> and Uti, thank you for highlighting it. We'll take a break now. So when we come back from the break, we want to discuss um, the Chrisland issue. Stay with us and um, link it up to how we can start the business of safety in schools. Stay with us. We'll be right back.